time for another venting video in which I ask you guys, can you relate to some of these inner thoughts that I have in my brain head? And some of you say, mm, yeah, kind of, Diane, I do. And then others of you say, no, Diane, I think you have some kind of disorder, which I already know. Wow, a content creator with anxiety and depression. What a special unicorn she is, a rarity. And today we're gonna to be looking at everyday things that cause me distress that really probably shouldn't because they're everyday things like calling somebody on the telephone. Some people say this is a generational thing because we all text now, right? We text. Back in day, people would handle phone calls all the time, all the live long day, you'd be on the phone. But if I have to call up somebody and ask for something on the phone, it freaks me the frick out. I also don't like when other people call me on the telephone and therefore I have this voice message. The person you're attempting to contact prefers text messages. Please message them, and they'll get back with you shortly. If I have to call somebody up on the phone, I will write it down like a script, and I'll practice what I have to say beforehand. Is that normal? Do other people do that? Or is that just a tiny proportion of us? Portion? Proportion. Next, when you need a handyman to come, something's broken, like a washing machine or something, and they say they're going to come at a particular time. Well, they don't say they're going to come. This is the problem. They don't say they're going to come at a particular time. They tell you a delivery slot. So they say they're gonna come sometime during the day between 9 and 3 p.m., which realistically actually means between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., doesn't it? And sometimes they don't even arrive at all. But invariably, when I know the handyman is coming, I'm on edge all day. I have to be ready to go. What if I have to take himself outside for a wee? That's terrible. What if I'm in the shower? These things can't happen, I have to be ready. By the way, if there are any new people here, I'm referring to a dog, not like a lover. Um, moving on. Oh, by the way, subscribe, share, comment, or I curse thee with the fact that the handyman will never come, even though you took the day off. Wouldn't that be inconvenient? So thumbs up this video, share, like, things stuff. Next, I don't know about you guys, but I do tend to get into very serious conversations in text. When you're having that conversation and it's going back and forth, back and forth, yes, you could just call somebody on the phone, but sometimes things are clearer in text messages, okay? So you're dot watching and then the dots just they just stop. What is more important than this conversation to you right now? Next up, groups of teenagers. I don't know why, I just find them scary. They could be the loveliest teenagers in the world. They just scare me. And even when I was a teenager, they scared me. Is that normal? Do other people get scared by teenagers? I just feel like they're gonna bully me or something or like throw things at me. That's probably a me thing, but I don't think it is. I think other people feel the same way. Teenagers are scary. Next, going to the doctor's office and trying to avoid sick people. I don't want to suicide a sick person. Yes, I'm there because I'm a sick person, but I don't want to be sick with something else, you know? I don't know why you're here, but I'm just gonna sit miles away. Next, and I know you're going to think I'm referring to like a partner doing this, but actually it can mean anyone thing, like my mom can do it. When they say, oh, by the way, remind me to talk to you about something later, because I need to know now what that something is. And of course they'll say it's not important, but it's important to me now because it's stressing me out. Just tell me what it is. Just tell me what it is. Or don't tell me that you need to talk to me. Just talk to me. Just talk to me when you're ready and there won't be a problem. Next, silence. If I'm comfortable with you, that wouldn't be a problem. We can sit in silence for hours. I'm totally okay with that. But if you're not somebody I know particularly well, I'm going to talk to fill the gap. I don't mind if I come across stupid or if I come across mean. Anything that comes out of my mouth is better than you and I sitting here in silence. I will say anything, even if it makes me look bad. I'll just say the first thing that comes into my head. I'm just going to say it. This one time at band camp, we were playing this game. Anything is better than sitting in an uncomfortable silence. Next up, staying over, okay? And again, I'm not necessarily talking about interpersonal relationships. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? No, I'm talking about like even your friends. Your friends are like, oh, you can just stay in mine. Or when I went back to Ireland and people were like, oh, why don't you just stay in my house? No, like that is so kind, but I just want my own space. You know, when you're like having a late night out or something and your friends are like, oh, just come and you can stay on my couch. No, I don't, I want to be in my bed. Even if it's my hotel bed, it's my bed, it's my space. It's my delegated space in the, in the world for that night. It's my, it's my space. I don't want to be in your space. I'll feel apologetic for everything I do in your space. I want my space. Not in my space, the website, but do other people feel that? Other people seem to be very like, roll with it. I invite people like, oh, you can sleep on my couch. I'm fine with that. But if they want to have me sleep on their couch, no. Even if it's a bed, no. I 
think this next one is kind of common. Airport security. Does anybody else feel like they might have a bomb when they're walking up to airport security? I know I don't have a, probably not. I probably don't have a bomb, but I sometimes think I might do. I get like a pulse in my ear and I'm like, oh God, do I have a bomb? Stop saying bomb. Definitely don't say bomb in front of airport security. Don't even joke about it. We know that now. Yes, we know that now. Next. I'm not trying to get into a mask debate here at all. You either are for masks or you're against, but either way, it's the people who are like just wearing the mask, but under their nose. I recently saw a meme or a meme. Somebody in my life recently called it a meme, which I think is fantastic. But I saw this meme and it was a cartoon of a guy with his genitals, uh, but his, only his balls had a condom on them. I know that's very vulgar, but I just thought it was funny because it was like very akin to the nose thing. Like, wear the mask or don't. You, you get into that debate somewhere else, but you're doing nothing with it under your nose. This is a huge one for me. Being told to relax. Telling me to relax has the exact opposite effect of actually making me relax. Every year I set myself these little tasks. And one of the things I set myself in 2020 was to acknowledge when I feel overwhelmed or indeed anxious and just to let people know I'm, I'm not feeling super relaxed about this. And then people go, oh, relax. I had no idea. I had no idea I was supposed to relax. Also, people telling you, oh, there's nothing to be worried about. I know that on a logical level, but I'm worried. You could say pretty much literally anything else. And I know they're trying to help, but it just doesn't, it doesn't, it, it has the opposite effect. Next up, and I know everybody's gonna tell me to download these passport remembering websites, and I always mean to, but I never do. It's when you can't log in and you try to for like 20 minutes and you're putting your password in repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly till you get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm just gonna reset my password. And you go through that whole thing and then you put in your new password and they say it cannot be the same as old password. And you're just like, ah! and I know I'm not the only one. I know. I know I'm not. Next, it's setting your alarm clock and knowing it's going to go off at that time. And I keep waking up every single hour waiting for it to go off. And then invariably, I'll wake up one minute ahead of the clock going off, or I will wake up like an hour ahead and I'm like, no point going back to sleep now, you know? Also, not being able to fall asleep, I'll get to like two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. And then I'm just like, might as well stay up now. Five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, fall back asleep, wonderful. The next thing that really stresses me out that I know really shouldn't, it's when I'm watching a TV show and I know the characters are spending above their living means. Their habits and lifestyle do not align with their position in their workplace. I can guesstimate what a person is earning. For example, Carrie Bradshaw writes one column a week and she lives in a fantastic New York City apartment. Granted, yes, she got a book deal, but where, where did the money come from before that? She was walking around in freaking Prada. In Euphoria, we have a lot of teenagers walking around with outfit changes three times a day. Where are they getting the money for these clothes? They don't look like they live in a particularly wealthy part of America. Yes, you could argue some of their parents are buying them clothes, but every single kid does not look like they come from a wealthy family. And it looks like middle America to me. Where are they getting the money for three outfit changes a day and no repeat outfits? And do I have to even ask about every single character on Friends living in New York City apartments? The penultimate one is any email that starts with Diane. No to, no hi Diane, no dear Diane, just Diane. I think you're angry at me. I'm pretty sure you're angry at me for something. It feels aggressive. And finally, thinking of a good comeback way too late. Like today, a guy who's a groundskeeper here was talking to me and I was trying to speak Spanish and he said back to me in English, you need to work better at your Spanish. And I just went, yes. And afterwards I had like a million comebacks, like you need to work better at being polite to people. Okay, granted, not the strongest comeback game ever, but better than yes, right? I just and then I practiced like a million comebacks today and I'll never get to say that to him again, you know? That'll never come up again. If for any reason I come across him again in a later exchange, I'm gonna come across as overly aggressive because I've really practiced my comebacks, you know? <sighs> I feel better. I hope you do too. Let me know below in the comments some things that stress you out that really shouldn't. And now I want to shout out the beautiful Karmic Goals crew because it's a karma kind of day, you know? Good karma is coming to all of these people. They deserve good karma coming at them from the universe. Good things. Relaxing vibes without being told to relax, you know? Look at their beautiful names. Oh, wow. Wow, look at their names. Wow. Oh, beautiful names floating around your head. Oh. Thank you to each 
each and every one of the Carmen Girls crew who make these videos possible. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye. So, 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 so. And today we're going to be looking at everything. <coughs> back in day, uh, back in day, people would handle phone calls. Back in day, people would handle phone Back in day, people would handle phone calls. Uh, I don't have the mumps. I have been bitten by a mosquito. That's why this side is all large.